right. Hey, welcome everyone to our DW Nation morning coffee break. Hey, we've got a guest with us today. We've got Mark Karen from the Wave System. And uh, we've got a few guests here also with us. Uh, I want to recognize Dana Foland with uh, Swim for CJ, and she's going to be our guest tomorrow also. And then we have Mark Radicus with Swim. And I'm sure we probably will be having some other people jump on here and things as the day as as this time frame goes. But hey, Mark, I want to thank you for being here today and uh, taking the time. You just said you got in from a run, so you was out and about, um, not yep. letting not letting that virus keep you booked uh, cooped up inside, right? But I'm sure you kept your social distance there. Exactly, exactly. Outside exercise is a lot easier to, to keep social distance, that's for sure. Yeah, well, it, you know, I, I don't know what the, all the clubs are doing. I mean, the people that like to work out in the clubs, that's going to be... They're closed a, here. Uh, I mean, yeah. the, the whole, whole county, Bergen, was almost a million people. Basically, everything is shut down. Wow, wow. Essential, you know, food yep. and gas. And... Yeah, that's uh, probably really putting on a... Um, uh, for your business with the wave system, I'm sure that's impacting um, what yeah, you, you know, right. how you guys are conducting business. Uh, tell us a little bit uh, for those people that may be tuning into this or watching the recording. We'll also probably we'll strip some audio off of this. We'll probably put this up in our our podcast also. But um, tell us a little bit about the wave system and what all you guys are doing to support um, you know the aquatics community. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is a drowning detection system for commercial pools. Essentially, measures how long each swimmer is underwater, and if they're underwater too long, alerts lifeguard or staff, whoever needs to be alerted. So, you know, we developed the system over the past couple of years. Uh, over the past year, we've been testing over a uh, hundred pools, a couple thousand swimmers. It involves a wearable, um, either something you can mm -hmm. attach to swim goggles or a little headband, very lightweight, and our testing is we've really refined that design our findings you know over 90 seven percent of the swimmers forget they even have it on it's just very lightweight and comfortable doesn't move around and so yeah it's a whole new approach to water safety in terms of we always say the gold standard of drowning detection is whether your face is underwater is obviously you can't breathe so that's what we're we're measuring we've had uh, a great feedback on it we're, we're deployed in um uh, a pool out in uh, Hobart, Indiana, um, the, the public uh, pool. They just built a beautiful new uh, pool for their high school. And a number of other pools are in, in trial mode and uh, rolling out. And of course, the in indoor pools have all uh, shut down right now with the current uh, virus going around. But, uh, you know, we're, we're still in touch with those folks, anticipating when they reopen. And also, you know, the outdoor pools, which not many open this time of year other than Florida, but um, th they're less of a concern, you know, uh, as people probably know that uh, the virus doesn't spread in water, I think, or any virus, you know, with, with chlorine and bromine in the water. So, but all the indoor pools are, are shut down for now, um, mm -hmm. at least in most of the parts of the, uh, the country that we're dealing with. Right, right. You, you know, you, you mentioned um, you're in a couple of pools and you know, your system really supports lifeguards. Uh, yesterday, or not yesterday, the other day you and I were chatting a little bit, and I think it's important let's uh, to bring this out because you were listening to one of our episodes, one of our podcasts, and everybody has various opinions about situations, and this happened to involve a child who drowned in a pool. Um, and, it, and actually, subsequently, it was a lifeguarded pool. So mm -hmm. people can get very, very critical of, you know, the staff, the people in the facilities um, in situations like that, and, and really maybe be quick to judgment as far as judge, you know, their abilities and what they're capable of doing. That's where your system can really offer some great support. Um, yeah. It, you know, whether or not the, the systems that the facilities have in place are, you know, they're doing their trainings, they're cut you know, capable and competent people, and, and of which I'm, I'm sure all of them are, otherwise they wouldn't be doing their jobs. Um, but that's where your system really shines. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, it, we're just acknowledging the fact that uh, drowning is very often, and you can say usually very difficult to detect. It can happen extremely fast, and it usually is very silent. And, you know, there are increasingly these um, 
surveillance videos because you know video is more common now and, and they're i'm sure you've seen a lot of them they're, they're chilling to watch because there'll be a a body that looks like it's just swimming underwater and you know no one's noticing and you know a minute passes and of course you know the body stops moving and it's you know it happens all the time and i know rick your your own story tragic loss of your daughter was at a lifeguard pool right and it's right. it's just it, it's just incredibly common and i think it's the awareness of that and, and to get parents and, and and bystanders and obviously you know lifeguards and staff you know have to be very much in tune with that and just realize how hard it is and of course our system is an extra set of eyes on the water especially you know when someone's underwater and in, and the lifeguards wear a vibrating bracelet and there's a you know a siren and strobe that that facilities can can utilize as well um but you know it that's the the, the difficulty of detecting drowning is not going to change the the nature of drowning is not going to change no matter how much we train people um, obviously, awareness is is hugely important just to get more eyes on the water. But ultimately, having technology and this technology is now available. It's very affordable, um, and it doesn't interfere with swimming. Right? It doesn't you know with the enjoyment of swimming? It doesn't interfere with the lifeguards. You know, our bracelets have nothing for the lifeguards to look at, so they keep their eyes on the water. And we think it's a very logical you know progression forward. We you know equate it to some sports where you know helmets are now very common that weren't you know whether it's cycling or skiing or skateboarding and, and people just realize hey it's you know it, it doesn't interfere with the sport and it adds a bit of safety you know why not do it right oh absolutely um i'm just going to put in the website here into our um, uh, notes here but uh, your website is uh, actually www.wavedds.com right as yeah. in drowning detection system yeah and it's a very simple i mean that's a real simple website to remember i mean yeah, like some so it's uh yeah it's, it's only seven characters so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah waves uh wave dds uh dot com yep. you guys just redid your website too it's looking really good well thank you yeah yeah my my co-founder dave at, um is a very creative guy not only a brilliant product designer and, and product guy but also uh, a very good creative and he did that website and um yeah there's a lot of very useful information on there you know, not only about our product, but about, you know, the, the, uh, the movements of, you know, preventing drowning. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, were you all going to be at the conference in Fort Worth with the NDPA? Um, <laughs> it, I like how you asked that in the past tense. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I don't know, have, have they canceled it or not? Yeah, they have. <laughs> they did, yeah. Yeah, yeah they so. just kind of made it official, I think, last night, this morning. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, they're yeah. still doing a virtual conference. So, yeah. you know, you'll yeah, we, we, we had a paper. We had submitted a paper that was approved. So, I guess the virtual part of that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely do. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, I, I know this is really uncharted. You know, everything going on in the world today is really uncharted territory. Yesterday in my coffee break, you know, we were talking about, I've got, and I've got them in my hand right now. You being, you're on the phone with me, you can't see it, but I have three war ration books from World War II. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. those of us that are old enough, you know, we may not have lived through that time, but we've heard of these and we've probably seen them. But, and so we're kind of going through an unprecedented time right now. And, and I'm sure your business, you've been, you spent a lot of your time on the road going to facilities, yep. conferences. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, how is, how is this changing the way, uh, because these businesses or these facilities still need the support. They're going to open back up. They may be closed right, right now. They're going to open back yeah. up. And I know there's a lot of concerns out there for these facilities. Uh, number one, we were talking yesterday and the other day, are, are our employees and lifeguards going to come back to work when we get the all clear to open back up? Because many yeah. of them need to work. They may go find jobs elsewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. The other thing is, what about our patrons? Will they come back? You know, uh, the ones that, you know, are they going to find other facilities? Are they, you know, and plus, people may have to figure out a different way to conduct business. There are, you know, things I think are going to change when we come out of this, you know, to yeah. protect ourselves from future situations like this. Um, now the wave system is, how is that changing the way you're doing business? And I know this is very early on, but I'm sure mm -hmm. you're still out there, I guess for all intents and purposes, kind of beating the pavement, but 
more from probably a remote situation, right? Yeah, right. I mean, you know, so um, facilities are closed. We're trying to gauge to what extent they're going to be, you know, doing projects, right? A lot of these facilities are open, you know, 365 days a year. And so some of them welcome a break or, you know, they can, uh, if they have some workers that can come in and keep their distance from each other, they can get some projects done. And so, you know, that, that's a, something we're certainly exploring. I think it's still so early in the process. I think people don't quite know what they're going to do, but hopefully right. in the next few days and certainly by next week, they'll have some idea of, of right. if they can do anything moving forward and, you know, could look at, uh, we, we don't use the word install because there's nothing to install or a system. It's completely portable, but um, in terms of, you know, deploying it and testing it um, so that we're certainly open to people doing that. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, we're obviously, you know, talking to people, you know, from home, you know, folks that are interested in our product, we you know, can continue the discussion and pricing and all that kind of stuff, delivery dates. Uh, so we're, we're pushing forward, you know, we, we may, we've been contemplating a, a road trip down to Florida, just because, um, as I mentioned, there are, you know, outdoor pools open there, and they open up earlier in the season, obviously, than, than up north here. Um, so, you know, we're just doing what we can to push forward. We're also taking advantage of the opportunity to, you know, uh, do some product enhancements, some uh, feature extensions that we've been looking to do. And, um, you know, taking advantage of the time, I think as a lot of people, if, if you can work from home, um, you know, as, as a lot of our engineers can, you know, get their work done from home. So, uh, right, right. you know, we'll, we'll keep pushing forward. Yeah, and you mentioned, that, you know, your system being portable. So if a facility is, you know, they're, especially up here in North, if they have an indoor and an outdoor facility, their outdoor facility has been closed, probably will be starting to gear up to open up here in the next uh, 60 days right. under normal cir circumstances. So their mm -hmm. indoor facilities would normally probably start slowing down anyways, probably close to this time and then gearing things up for the outdoors. So your system, so going forward, if somebody's considering a drowning detection system, being yours is portable, no installation, which is a huge savings, I'm sure, for a facility mm -hmm. because yeah. now they could actually take that system, if I'm understanding you correctly, take it from that indoor facility to the outdoors and not miss a beat as far as how the system works. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also pools that are, or facilities that are building new pools, which you know, are not all that common, but they certainly are out there. You know, some, they're looking to, to buy the system before the new pool opens, use it on their old pool, and then just move it you know, it's literally, you know, an hour or whatever it is, picking it up and moving everything um, to the new pool. So that's something that uh, just gives them a little more flexibility also. Right. The other thing about the portability is for, uh, you know, why, why MCAs and even, you know, parks and recs that do outings, you know, to mm -hmm. a, a lakefront or even to a beach, you, you could take the system with you. It literally weighs 13 pounds, um, the, the central hub. You can grab as many of the wearables as you, you need for that outing. And, uh, you can cover people in a, you know, at a lakefront or a beach. Right, right. Um, Dana Follin, she asked a question here. She was uh, asking here, are these devices something that are reused by multiple people? How would you respond to that? How, let yeah, me know about yeah. that. Uh, they, they are typically, the, the facility owns them. Um, and one, one thing about chlorinated water, it does a great job of keeping them clean. Um, there are some facilities just looking for outdoor for the summer for lakes, you know, natural water. Obviously, that's more of an issue. And but it's it's injection molded plastic. It's uh, closed cell foam made of um, you know antimicrobial material. So it's certainly designed and chlorinated pools is really not an issue at all. We haven't seen anything. You know, mm -hmm. nothing can grow on it. Outdoor pools. Um, you know, our lakes, we suggest they, you know, just dip it in a, you know, light cleaning, you know, a bucket of light cleaner at the end of the day, just dip it in there. Right, right. Um, just so, uh, you know, Dana can understand, she probably is watching this on video too. I was just looking over here at the desk because I've got some of your brochures here, but of course, uh, didn't think about uh, grabbing one and having it right here in front of me. But uh, just so you know, Dana, there's, as you, you know, if you can imagine kind of like a headset type of, a, it's a very thin piece of plastic. 
I think they have felt on or, or foam, I think, edges, but they, yep. it fits very securely. And so it would be on the temple here of somebody's head and it would kind of go around. And you've tested these where people have actually dove in off of diving boards, jumping in oh, the yeah. pools, and these oh, yeah. devices are fit very comfortably. People don't even know they're on. And they're secure where they don't even come off. And if one was to happen to come off, I believe they float, correct? Yep. Yep. They float. Yep. Yeah. And if kids are wrestling or whatever and it pops off, it's been fun seeing the kids kind of instinctively just put them back on mm -hmm. so that everyone else has them on. So it's uh, really hasn't been an issue. Right. And then if somebody was wearing goggles, uh, there's an attachment for the goggles too. Yep. Yep. Okay. And, yeah. and these yeah, and that, that's that's all on the website there. You can see all that right. stuff. Right. Yeah. So yeah, Dana. The, I put the website there, Dana, in the um, uh, our chat section. So you know you can go there. There's actually they've got videos of demonstrations how these are being used and showing this. Um, it is very very cool because it also works in open water. This is I think a game changer because most drowning detection systems are really geared for swimming pools right and, right and not so much and, it, and it's a challenge there's many many companies that are working on the open water situation um, for that purpose but because they are their facilities require installation when you have open water what are you in, you can't install it in anything so, yeah and obviously any, any video based system is not going to work in natural water mm -hmm. it's just too, you know. right right so. well you know, Mark, I know you've been out running, jogging, <laughs> and everything. That's why, you know, you you, you respectively uh, considered us here on video. So from that standpoint, we're having... <laughs> Next uh, time, I, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure it's video and I, I can show you all, all our new products. And Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, um, I know we kind of put this together on the fly with everything kind of going on here. And I think people's work schedules and uh, being that people are kind of stuck in the house, that's kind of what we're thinking as we kind of go along with this over the next 30, 60 days if things don't really change here anytime too soon after the 15-day lockout, more or less, um, then, you, you know, people, I'm hoping that we can begin to deliver this. And so if that be the case, would really, uh, we can discuss a little more in depth of what we, we can do to maybe bring bring you back on maybe if this thing lasts any, any longer through the month of March or April. And we'll, you know, uh, definitely begin to share more information as, you know, our, our audience is growing. Uh, we're getting a lot of subscribers. Many of these people, it's nine o'clock in the morning, West Coast, they're still in bed. Um, <laughs> you, you know, that. so it's not coffee break in the West Coast. Yeah, the, they have to get up and have their coffee break. I, I just was, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I was geared to when I was an aircraft mechanic. Nine, nine a.m. was my coffee break. I mean, you know, because I'd been to work since six, seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> exactly. So nine a.m., you see, you take a 15, 20 minute break. And so then you kind of get your day started. So that's kind of what we're doing here. And we've been doing this since the mid December, actually in our private group. And so we decided to take it out of our private group and bring this to more people because uh, a lot of people aren't on Facebook or they just, you know, how they want to, you know, consume that information. So we are putting this recording up in our private group, but also we are putting it up in our YouTube channel. So it is shareable from that standpoint. And like I said, Mark, we will go ahead and uh, we're going to actually create a short little podcast with this too. So, so Great. there'll be a, there'll be an audio version of this also. I just, right. the biggest thing is we just need people to understand there's a huge problem going on in the world, drowning, and the problems with drowning in these facilities and training and staffing, these things have to go on. They don't, they can't stop. And that's, that's, I think what's really worries me about this is a lot of things are going to be put on the back burner and we've got to get things ramped back up going, going forward. Um, I want to just put out there, if anybody else has any other questions, we've got several people on here uh, right now. Uh, if anybody would have a question, raise your hand or put it into the uh, chat box. I can either, uh, um, you know, as long as we don't get too many people on here, I can open up the mic on everybody. And if they want to say something, fine. If not, just put it in the chat box here while we, while you just kind of start to wrap up. But uh, Mark, if somebody really wanted to get in touch with you, what's the best way? I mean, I know yep. you've got an email address, I think, and everything too. Yep, yep. It's, uh, it's just Mark with a K at the wave DDS.com. Okay. Yeah. Again, simple website, simple email address. Yeah. There you go. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, no, please. Uh, happy, yep. happy to. Yeah. So I um, enjoy I, engaging with uh, folks in the aquatics community and obviously the drowning, you know, prevention 
conditions. Right, and so. it's great information. We've got some advocates and people like that are here that are probably going to be setting up tables and doing some things um, this spring. Um, I guess as if we if they can, well, depending on when it's going to take place. But uh, you you know, obviously you've got information that they could display, they can talk about, they can share. You're yeah. very. Yeah. Uh, I I know you and Dave both are very supportive of the water safety community. You guys yep. are, you're very, very active in uh, shows and, um, and everything. Um, yep. Yeah, Craig, yep. um, that email address, Craig, is, uh, it is Mark, here, I'll just, I'm, if you're online here, I'm going to go ahead and, it, it, and Mark, is it just Mark at DDS.com? At, at WaveDDS.com. Okay. Mark. It's Mark with, at, Mark with a K, yeah. Yep. So M-A-R-K at wave w-a-v-e d-d-s dot com correct yep okay yeah i just put that here also in the uh, comment section so so uh craig it is if you got that craig it is mark at wave d-d-s dot com and then uh his cohort in crime is dave so it would probably be dave at yep. wave d-d-s yep. dot com and, and D dave is kind of the um um, oh, I don't know the the, the inventor or the yep. the designer he's, of all this. He's kind yep. of the the he, brains he's, of that side. You're the person who's in basically in front, kind of talking to people, educating people about this, right? Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm the CEO. You know, we, we basically Dave and I came together, gosh, almost four years ago, started mm -hmm. developing the the product together, and you know, he's he's obviously been in it for uh, twelve years in a previous you know company doing. Uh, previous generation product um, so he's you know he's been around he's won NDPA awards and, and other uh, awards for his work right and, um, yep. and then it's, it's been a, a great collaboration and got a bunch more people involved and uh, we're off and running and I think it's important to note that I, I know there's a lot of people that are in business and uh, they don't have a personal relationship to say to water safety drowning but in this case I know Dave does um, because there was an open water drowning or a drowning there in his community where he and his, uh, I think it was his daughter or one of his children were there that day. And yep. it happened to be somebody, a friend or a friend of the Classmate, family. Yeah. I don't, yeah. and, and, it, and it really hit home and he got started looking at this problem many, many years ago and has been on the forefront of many developments in the drowning mm -hmm. detection before probably drowning detection was even a, a, a thought in many people's minds. Right. Uh, so, uh, from that standpoint, you guys have been on the cutting edge of this. You've been, you know, out front. You, and I don't know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're probably the only American-based company that's in the drowning detection business. Is that correct? Um, yes, that is correct. Um, there, yeah, there was... There was one was other. Little... There was one other that that is um, a lot less active right now. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I was, was going to say you said that with a little bit of hesitation because you know it, probably because of that one other company they were. I don't know whatever happened to them. They yeah. just I, they were making some sales and I don't I don't think they delivered on their product. I don't know. There was there. Oh, we won't even open up that bag of worms. But right. um, but it, you know a lot of the companies are overseas uh, and they yep. are here yep. in the U.S. I mean they're yep. they're. You know, in that they're established and they're in business in the U.S. Some are offering products, some are just still in the development stages. But right. from that standpoint, you uh, your product is American made. It is you know designed and supported, yep. and your company is right here in the United States. And yep, and yep, we're in Connecticut, um, and we got you know we get we we source parts from all over uh, the country. Is a company called Proto Labs up in Minnesota is one of our big suppliers, and um, yeah, it's uh, we're we're building them in, in Connecticut. Yep. There you go. So, you know, buy American. Say, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Connecticut, you, Connecticut used to be, historically, it was a major manufacturing state mm -hmm. you know, for, it, for many decades. And it may, it may go back to that. Maybe they'll start manufacturing toilet paper or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but no, it's uh, maybe that, that we could start charging a mission for these. Hey, there we go. Everybody send a virtual roll. 
something for our for our show here. But uh, hey, Mark, I appreciate your time. I appreciate everybody showing up here. And if you've got any questions, um, obviously you can put them here. Um, you can go into DW Nation at Facebook dot for actually Facebook dot com forward slash groups forward slash DW Nation. Join the group there. Uh, post any questions there. Also on um, shoot me an email also at rick at the .com or contact Mark directly at mark at wave .com with your questions. Obviously you've got a contact information through their website. You can also contact them directly through the website. And trust me, every time I email these guys, I hear back very quickly. Very promptly. They are <laughs> well, Rick, that's um, I, I can't say we do that to every email, certainly from customers. Uh, we will do that, but uh, we're we're very supportive of what we, what you're doing, Rick. I mean, it's um, it, it's so important. It it's it's just it, that message, that awareness, um, that's so critical for you know the industry, the aquatic industry, and to, and, and for you know human safety, child safety. You just have to get that message out there, and so we're we're just very supportive of, of what you're doing, and and um, just just thankful for for all the energy you put into it. Well, as I've always said, if this technology would have been around, it will be 27 years this June, my daughter would be alive. Yeah, I mean, well. it's, it's simple. I, I mean, it, those of you that see this system in play, at, you know, doing its job and how it works. I mean, I hate to say, say it, it, it's really kind of stupid, funny how simple it really is. It's very technical, but the device and the system really does a great job and you know i've seen it in person in demonstration in person they're in bristol uh, connecticut uh, a year ago in january we've seen it we've been at several shows uh, at the same shows together i've seen it there with your little um mannequin dummy that you have <laughs> we have our little little like uh, kitty pool and our little little yeah. mannequin yeah demonstrating yeah yeah so i've seen this in in action uh, actually those of you that were at the ndpa conference last year dave was there with a demonstration right. and yep. when he was yep. doing his talk in the room just so you know that somebody dropped i think that um the bucket of water and a tracker was over 100 150 yards away from where he was speaking and, it, and somebody put it in the water I, nope, not I knowing what it, you know, what it would do. Yeah. And so unbeknownst to Dave, the alarm went off after right. it was in right. the water. So it, it really showed that yeah. the system worked from that yeah. amount of distance away. It, it, it's got a, a, a range of about a thousand feet line of sight. So for a, a, a lakefront or a beach, you know, you can cover quite a large area. Right, right. So I, we could probably sit here all day long talking about this stuff. This is what we do. But uh, Coffee's getting cold. We got to go. Yes, yes, it is. So, <laughs> hey, Mark, appreciate your time. Appreciate everybody's time. And we will yep. all talk at you guys tomorrow. We'll see you. Right. Thanks, Rick. Right. Bye-bye.